Hello and welcome, fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in because in today's video, we're going to check out my new Lazy Man's Legendary Farm. Now, some of you are probably familiar with the legendary farm I have in survival mode. It's a pretty awesome little build and we get a lot of kills and a lot of legendaries from this place. But, like always, when I build something, it's over the top and extremely complicated. So, I have built a new legendary farm with the complete opposite in mind. How cheap can I actually make it and get a whole bunch of cages in? So, that's what today's video is all about. We're going to see how I built the new legendary farm, what it took to make it, and just how cheap I made it. So if you're cheap and you're lazy and you don't want to spend a lot of time making a legendary farm, then hey, this is the perfect video for you. So let's get it started. This legendary farm is going to be so simple that it's only going to take five objects to make the whole legendary farm. So let's take a look and see what those five <laughs> objects are. The first thing that we're going to want to make is gunner cages. It'll take steel bottle caps and copper to make these. The next thing we're going to want to make is some concrete foundations. Of course, steel and concrete to make those. Next is copper, steel, ceramic, rubber, and that makes a siren. Now those three objects we can make pretty much at any level, but the next two objects we're going to make will require you having at least six in intelligence and three or four in science. We're going to need to make the heavy laser turret. And as you can see, it'll take rank three in science to craft or make that particular laser turret. Next is the Fusion Core Generator. And as you can see, it takes a rank of four in science to be able to make this particular generator. Now, you don't have to have science in case you don't have science. Um, you can use other generators and other guns to do this. You just may need more of them. All right, now that we know everything that we need, let's see how much of it that we do need. Now, the thing to take away from this list is it's really not all that many. Really, what's going to hurt us here is the bottle caps for the gunner cages. They're 500 apiece, and we're going to do 20, so that's 10,000 caps. Also, nuclear materials, pretty hard to find. So let's take a quick look and see where we can find some of these items. If you have your charisma up and local leader and all of that, and you have tier 3 vendors, then you can go there and buy shipments from them. Also, every now and then you can find yeah, tier 4 sell. vendors to work sure. at Let your settlements. Now, also another thing to do when you are at your vendors, or even the vendors in Diamond City or the big cities, is look at their inventory uh, other than the shipments. And the reason is, is because nuclear material is very hard to find. And depending upon what level you are, how long you've been playing the game, what you've been doing, you may not have enough nuclear material. So you'll want to look for items like the biometric scanner, the blast radius, etc. And from your tier 3 vendors, sometimes you can buy quite a bit. As you saw, there were six of those scanners. Also, the shipments they have will cover quite a few of the things that you need as well. Now, also, don't forget Diamond City, Crazy Myrna. She's going to have a lot of shipments. You can get a lot here. Also, check her inventory for other individual items that you can break down for their components inside. Also, we've got Arturo. So, don't forget him. He's going to have copper, aluminum, gears, screws, pretty much everything that you need Arturo is going to have. Now, there are quite a few other vendors, depending upon what DLCs you have, etc., what, what you're doing. But 
We're sticking with the main part of the game. So let's run over to Good Neighbor. Of course, Cleo's got some stuff. And Daisy's going to be another, you know, Tier 3 or whatever you want to call it, vendor. So check their inventories. You should be able to buy almost everything that you need from these vendors here. If not, one more vendor that you could hit real quick, and that's Proctor Tegan, if you've got the Brotherhood of Steel spawned in. Uh, he's at the end of the Predowin, and he's going to carry circuitry, which is a hard one to find, and fiber optics, and so you'll get a couple of things here. Now, if you're like me, and you don't like coming off with your caps, then let me show you a couple places in the open world that you can get a few of these hard-to-get things. Our first stop is Jamaica Plains. And even if you've done the treasure of Jamaica Plains, you can still go here and farm these laser trip wires. And when you uh, disable them, it gives you crystal, steel, and fiber optics, I believe. I should be looking. Yeah, fiber optics. Now, just because you uh, dismantle them all or disarm them uh, doesn't mean that you're done. You can reactivate the switch, the button there, open and close the door, turns them back on, and you could literally farm this area over and over and over again. Our next stop is Wilson Adama Toys. Here you can get a boatload of Giddy Up Buttercups. You're going to be able to get springs, screws, steel, and uh, gears. Gears, that's it. Out of buttercups. Also, while you're here, don't forget to take a trip up on the roof. Follow this little path down this pipe. Drop into the hole right here. And at the end, you'll find a steamer trunk surrounded and guarded by concrete. So we picked up a little concrete while we were here as well. Our final stop is Makara Fish Packing Plant. That's right, once we kill a couple of cents in here, we're going to be able to find an area that has a lot of aluminum trays. And yeah, that's what we need, aluminum. Also, I'd like to mention that since we are doing a legendary farm video, this particular dungeon is a great place to farm for legendaries. If you hard save on the entrance outside and then do a quick save on the inside when you load in, you can farm this for all types of legendaries. And of course, that depends on what level you are at the time that you're doing that. So if you want to give it a try, that's a good place to farm for legendaries here. All right, with all those locations found, we have everything that we need with the exception of copper, uh, circuitry, and nuclear material. So keep an eye out at your vendors for items that have those materials in it. That's probably how you're going to have to get them. All right, we're ready to get started, so let's get some gunner cages made. Now, it's going to take steel bottle caps and copper to make one. Uh, what's really going to hurt here is the 500 caps that it's going to take to make one cage. And as you know, I'm going to make 20, so that's going to be 10,000 caps. Now, you may not have that many caps, if you're a new player especially. So, just depends on what you can afford, how many cages that you need to make. First of all, let's go over that real quick, why we're making so many. And that is because the more cages you have out, then the more chances that you have for legendaries to show up at your settlement. What happens is when you trap the, the enemies in a cage, they bang on the side of it and make a lot of noise. So when they're doing that, it, in theory, attracts other people of their kind. So we're doing gunners, of course, other gunners. And they'll attack to try to free their friends out of the cages. All right, now I've got my first five cages down, so I think that's a pretty good start. Let's get a concrete foundation out and line it up to the end of one of the cages. All right, now, to continue on from where I was just talking about, since the enemy is going to come and try to attack the cage and damage it to let their friends out, we need to build something to, ho to house the cage so that it doesn't get damaged or destroyed. In my legendary farm, I built it in a tower 
which doesn't necessarily keep the enemy out, but it does make it extremely hard for them to get in there. And because they can't get in, they can't break the cage, therefore I don't got to repair it, spend more caps to rebuild it and repair it, and so on. So what I want to do is I don't want to build a building for all of these cages. In other words, I don't want to do a foundation, four walls, and a roof. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover the cages with a foundation, and we'll let the foundation be all four walls and the roof. And therefore, very little resources or things we need to build to get it all done here. Now, what we just saw was that I had to raise the foundation up a little bit to actually get one to snap over top of it. Now, I've placed in another six uh, gunner cages down the side. So, I have two rows of gunner cages. We've put an electrical conduit on one of the foundations, snapped it on over top of it. Also, don't forget, connect your electrical conduit to the cages. This is how I'm going to easily connect power up to the cages through the concrete uh, foundation. I'm doing a visual inspection right here real quick so I can make sure all of the cages are connected together. And they are, so I can go ahead and start putting the concrete over top of it. Sweet! Now that I've got all of my cages covered by foundations, I'm going to group select the whole thing and I'm just going to move it out of the way. What I'm doing is I'm building down there where it's more flat. If you We're at County Crossing, which I'm sure you guys know. Uh, it's not real level here. So what I'm trying to do is build all of my stuff down here where it's a little bit more flat and level. So you might want to do that too, wherever you're building your farm. Now we have 12 cages already built. There's two rows of six. So what I want to do is come and build another eight cages. So two rows of four. And we'll just knock that out and build it the same way we just built all those other cages. Next, I'm going to take this metal post and I'm going to shove it all in the ground. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to group select everything and then I'll be able to put the foundations and the cages down into the ground. Now, if you notice, it is red and it's not turning green. The reason is, is because that part of the settlement is a lot lower than the main part of the settlement, kind of where I'm standing right now. Because of that you know, we're visually missing dirt compared to where we're standing. So it's only going to allow us to put these down in the ground so far where I'm putting them in right now. If you want your foundations deeper in the ground, then you might have to find another spot in the settlement to put them. And you can actually get these, you know, ground level or so, uh, especially if we put them over where the other uh, cages are at right now. All right, what my thought is, I'll just kind of curve around the uh, area where we're growing crops right there and then down that side of the settlement. Uh, later on, I'm going to have six people here, one vendor and five people working crops. So we're going to actually have a total of 30 crops out working. Now I've regrouped, selected our 12 cages, and I'm just going to line it up here and just kind of, you know, put it in. Who cares where it's at? Just put it in there. All right, now I kind of was working on some gun turrets and I started off with this and then it turned into scaffolding. Now, scaffolding is not part of this build and, you know, it wasn't what I was really going to show. It was just more or less, here's the cages, here's the foundations, here's your siren, here's your guns, bang, you're, you know, super, super simple. I just added the scaffolding in. My thought was if I fast traveled in that I could quickly run from one spawn location to another and identify where the legendaries are at because I'm pretty sure if you have played this game any at all by now sometimes or quite often once you kill somebody it's pretty hard to find their bodies and I can't tell you how many legendaries I've lost 
Now, one thing that is kind of cool is sometimes or quite often later on, even though the body has despawned or is no longer there, the legendary weapon or a weapon is still laying on the ground. Um, that's how I believe somebody discovered that you could size glitch your settlement by uh, storing or scrapping weapons. Okay, let's get started on the gun turrets. What I did here is I've placed one laser turret on a floor. Now these are the quarter floors for the scaffolding. Because I'm using those, I can't actually carpet glitch a um, another laser turret on beside it and it, everything go together. So we're going to have to carpet glitch the second uh, turret in later on. All right, what I'm doing here is taking the curved concrete wall trick and I'm lowering the floor down three floor levels lower than where it's at right now. All right, once I get it to the third floor down I'll bring the floor down and I'll do it to the bottom one as well and now you can see we're offset by three floors I'll grab the uh, oh I guess we better connect it to power first right and now we'll go ahead and grab the top one and put it in on where it goes now you can see I've already connected all of the wiring as well now we'll go ahead and snap up this one now, I've got actually uh, four laser turrets per spawn location. It's way overkill, people. You really don't need that many laser turrets. As a matter of fact, I'm actually thinking about taking one or two out per, per spawn location. I'm running 12 turrets right now, and I, I mean, I can't even see the enemies before they're dead. You know, so you, you play with that a little bit. You might not need so much firepower. All right, we're just carpet glitching, glitching in the second turret. The reason we're doing this is because it has a pretty bad um, uh, collision aura around it. Also, when we take the carpet out from underneath of it, like we just did there, store it. If you noticed, the turret didn't drop down or pop up. If we were to move the floor right now, the turret would just be floating in the air. And that's why I carpet glitch them in after I put the uh, floors up. Okay, connect everything together. Now let's see why we spent the extra time moving the lower floors. And that's because we're going to put in some of these little railings. Um, I don't know if it helps or not, but hell, it makes it look cool. <laughs> You know, I really don't know if it does help. Uh, I'm sure it does block some of the the laser turret from getting hit as easy. But like I said, it looks cool. So you could build this whole thing just like I did, even the scaffolding, and still not go over your budget. You can see my build size up in the right-hand corner there. I'm right at it, but I'm not over it. And that was really part of the build idea as well. Now, I do think I'm going to size glitch a little bit because I might want to put some lights up and, you know, kind of do something a little different. But that's really entirely up to you. All right. Now, the final thing to do is to bury the electricity, the generator. So I've got a little conduit out. Everything's hooked up. Really, the conduit is just to help get the wire over to where everything's connected up there. You can see it goes up to the siren and then the siren up to the defenses but uh that's just basically so i don't have a wire hanging out somewhere in the uh settlement also you can see how much farther down we sank something uh where the dirt or the ground was a little higher and our generator is now completely underground right there now the only thing left to do is fill our cages uh, it's as simple as this. I just went over to the slog, slept for 24 hours, fast traveled back, and as soon as I get there, if I can hear banging on the cages, that means they're full.
Oh, yeah. I hear it. Bang, bang, bang. Nice. Everything looks good. Yeah. All right. Our cages are full. I've got the uh, extra crops in. We're going to do 30 crops. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. So I've got extra corn and whatever else here. All of our cages run down the side. I do have another power connector right there in case I want to add more cages later on or whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and pull a foundation off and take a look at a cage and see what it looks like there. I'll just move it out of the way and yeah, doors closed. Oh, that guy's not happy. He's half underground. When the fight's all over and the legendaries are dead, boom, they turn off the siren too. I don't know why that is so satisfying to see them settlers turn on and off that siren. And when you connect your defenses to it, oh, it's just total mayhem. Oh, I love my legendary farm. So much fun. Well, there is a couple of things that I probably would do different here that I didn't, did do, didn't do, whatever. First of all, I think the scaffolding was a waste. Every time I got here, I never did use it. Uh, it was just as easy to run around on the ground and run from, you know, spawn point to spawn point. Generally, most legendaries uh, only use one or two of the spawn locations. I don't know if ever, but very rarely do all three uh, spawn locations have enemies. Also, <clears throat> I haven't really noticed an increase in the number of legendaries. Of course, I've only run a couple of fights so far with it, uh, which we just saw. Uh, we only had one legendary one time, and then two of the fights didn't have any legendary. So, you know, hey, maybe it might not work in just... Uh, uh, what, what, I don't even know what mode I'm playing in. Uh, harder than usual? <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely not survival because the game crashes too much in survival for me. All right, everybody. Thank you all very much for stopping in, hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun checking out my legendary farm for being cheap and lazy. I did. I had a great time, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Until so then, please stay safe and take care. Peace.